As always when I'm recording these pieces I've no idea whether you can hear me or not because it is blowing the gale and the tide is in but we've got this incredible sunset tonight over the pier so I thought this is the perfect spot to do my latest introduction to Toy Tuesday. It's this, it's the Toyota 2000 GT from You Only Live Twice. I'm not going to say it's epic because I'm trying not to use that word but the box artwork on this toy is phenomenal. In fact I've got the rest of it in here in my pocket because it keeps blowing away. But the, the upper card, it fires rockets, it's got a James Bond figure in it firing out the back. It's just a fantastic toy. What I'm going to do now is go back to the shop and show you a little bit more in detail and in a little bit more warmth as well. See you in a minute. Before I do this week's Toy Tuesday video, again this week we've had a lot of new subscribers so I just wanted to say hello and welcome you to the channel and say thank you for coming on board and also to all our existing subscribers, the comments you left last week and your memories of the toys that we had are fantastic. Now again anyone if you had this toy or any of the other toys please leave your comments in the section below and tell us your stories and memories about them because that's what we'd like to hear and also if you want to send me any pictures through social media as well you can do that's great as well it's cool seeing all the really good stuff and oh, talking of new subscribers Time Tunnel Toys UK has just subscribed it's just come on the screen as a notification then so uh, they have a brilliant Instagram page hello and welcome to the channel anyway so for now we are going to get back to doing this week's Toy Tuesday quick history of the Toyota 2000 GT. This week I'm not going to do a speeded up version of the history because I asked everyone about it last week and they hated that bit so I'm not going to do that and I'm not going to take the mickey out of Timothy Dalton either. So the history of the Toyota 2000 GT. The Toyota 2000 GT is a very 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 pretty car. The Toyota 2000 GT was a Japanese attempt at making a sports car comparable with those on sale in Europe, like the Porsche 356 or the Mercedes 300 SL, the Aston Martin DB4 and the Ferrari GT uh, 250 GT Coupe, and of course the E-Type Jag, which inspired the design for the Toyota 2000 GT. Not only was it comparable in looks, it was super desirable, super fast, super reliable and super expensive. In fact, those are all the essential things you need to make a car qualify as super. The GT was front-engined, it had an aluminium body, four-wheel independent suspension and magnesium alloy wheels, which I just love the sound of. Magnesium alloy wheels, it just, just sounds fantastic. Anyway, only 351 road cars were made and each one was built by Yamaha, not Toyota. And the dashboards and all the wooden bits in, um, in the car were made by Yamaha's piano making bit too. I suppose you would call it the music department, maybe, I don't know. To be honest, the only reason I know about this car really is because of the Bond film, which is sad because it's a very, very pretty car. I said that before? Anyway, and they nearly used the Chevrolet Camaro in the film, which wouldn't have been a disaster, but not as cool as the 2000 GT. Right, so let's take a look at the toy. Corgi released the Toyota 2000 GT in 1967, two years after the first DB5 and the Saint car, and also the year after the Batmobile. Between 1965 and 1969, Corgi would sell nearly 4 million Aston Martin DB5s, so it made absolute common sense to them to do the Toyota. Corgi released the toy in October, a couple of months after the film had hit the cinemas, and they followed the same formula as they did before. Epic box art, oh, I said it again, I'm gonna really cool box artwork um, very vibrant very bright uh, you had your secret instructions drawer underneath with the bullets in it had a little bit that popped up at the back and it fired bullets out and it had the character shooting out the back it uh, oh and jeweled headlights as well but it's actually a really fine piece of toy making the the details and the lines in the 2000 gt on the bonnet there's a lot of detail i think there's even a control panel at the back from the film where the, was it a TV screen or a radio um, that they communicated with anyway that was behind the seat. Now, they never actually made a convertible 2000 GT. I keep wanting to call it a 200 GT. They, they never made a convertible 2000 GT. It was custom done for the film and it was 
done by Yamaha in, I think, under two weeks. They built two of them. And the reason was, well, so they say the reason for that is that Sean Connery was six foot two and he couldn't fit in the normal car, which he would have been all right in the Camaro, but not in this. So what did they do? They just took the roof off it, which I think is a really cool idea. And um, I actually went to see the car when it was in the lakes at the Cars of the Stars. And it was a very, very, very attractive car, as I've said many, many times. And it's really, it's a shame that they didn't make more of them and they didn't make it as a convertible because it's an absolute classic. Now, I hadn't realized that one didn't have a windscreen, so I'm going to check the video from earlier just to make sure I've not dropped it somewhere or broken it, which is pretty much like me. Now, I think having three of these, it would be irresponsible for me not to test how far they fire. And I don't know if you've seen any of my old videos or you follow me on Instagram, we used to do something called dangerously firing toys of the 60s and 70s, where we would get um, the rocket firing toys and the cap toys and that kind of thing and, and, and see if we could injure a, um, a modern day child with them. And uh, I've been pretty unsuccessful so far, but I think we'll give it a go with this and see if we can, well, if nothing else, just create a dangerous choking hazard. Me being me, I thought I had the right bullets to put in this to fire out to test how far they fire. And because we, on, when we have these on display, we have these little red plastic things in there to make it look cool. But those are actually out of a Batmobile and they don't fit in here properly and they don't fire either. So what I'm going to do is go and get my box of amazing Corgi spares and see if we've got anything that we can put in here to fire out of it. So I'm just going to go and get that now. This way. So here I have my amazing box of Corgi spares with um, Dollboy suitcases, Milkman, things from the Captain Scarlet thing, technical term for it, those, I think that's off a dinky, tiny traffic cones, anyway you get the idea, there's lots of spare parts in it, I think, oh yeah we've got a Starship Enterprise shuttle as well which is cool, right so I'm going to see if there's anything in here that we can fire out the back of there. Back in a mo. Now before I fire these, two things. First of all, I couldn't do this video without acknowledging the sad passing of Sir Sean Connery. He was epic and I'm gonna allow myself that one. He was a legend and big part of my childhood, so a little bit devastated. So I just wanted to pay my respects. Now, secondly, is my next video. I'm a bit torn between what I'm going to do. Now, a while ago, I did a video about the Aston Martin DB5, and it was terrible because I dropped my phone, broke my microphone and my phone as well at the same time, and had to record it sort of in a shoebox with terrible sound, and it was, it was bad, basically. So, should I remake that video or do a sort of extended version of that or should I do a museum tour now put your answers in the comment section below and whichever one you think is the best ideas best idea rather as viewers of the channel I will make that video but now I'm off to warm up my soup and then we're gonna fire those right so I, right so my soup is out the poppy ping and before I go and rub it in my mustache I have made a discovery and that is sorry I've just got a text message and all that and that is that the bullets from the Batmobile do not fire out of the Toyota 2000 GT from You Only Live Twice. Well, that's underneath of it as well, which is pretty cool. So, what I did was I took a bullet out of a Buck Rogers Starfighter and I chopped the end off it. Don't hate me, toy collectors. And I found that, that works really well. And I've also found these yellow things, which are a little bit too big to fit in the boot but they do fire quite well out of it so I think I'm going to try with either those or the doctored Buck Rogers bullets but for now I'm going to go and tell you an interesting fact about these bullets from the Batmobile because I find it really amusing so for this interesting fact that I find amusing I am quoting from the great book of Corgi by Marcel R. Van Cleanput 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 Welcome to a health and safety briefing from Corgi Toys in 1966. These little red missiles were not as dangerous as they sound, as they were well rounded and if swallowed would easily pass through the digestive system. Yummy, but you're kind of knackered if you inhale one though.
Right, I've had an idea. I know I've been dragging this bit out a bit, but I'm going to use coloured pens, mark the bullets, number them one to three, and whichever fires the furthest, if you guess it, and you guess it right, the first person in the comment section below to guess the colour right, will win this copy of my signed Sean Connery picture. So I will send that to you. So, um, right, let's get firing these things. Quick couple of things before I go. If you want to guess which bullet went the furthest, leave your answer in the comment section below. The first correct answer wins a copy of this signed Sean Connery photograph. Also, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe as well. Finally, if you want to vote for next week's video, you can. Most popular suggestion will uh, win, obviously, but it's a choice between me doing the DB5 video or a tour of the Toy Museum upstairs. But that's everything for now. This was the Toyota 2000 GT from Corgi. Sadly, I think they only sold nearly 900,000. So it didn't sell the 5 million that the DB5 did in its first incarnation, but it is a lovely toy and it's a lot of fun. It's a great thing to look at. Don't let the lockdown get you down. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next week for another Toy Tuesday. Bye for now. Let's go back to that sunset, actually.